Hi everyone. Continuing our tour of the SymPy library, we are now going to discuss some basic calculus. From the previous videos, we know how to manipulate algebraic expressions and how to plot symbolic functions. And we also know how to set up the environment. So I'm not going to repeat the details, but let's zoom in to see what we have done. So we imported the SymPy library and then in the second line, we defined some real symbolic variables and then some positive integer variables in the third line. Now, before discussing calculus, let's quickly discuss the algebraic functionality that one can use to solve equations. And let's use it to solve the equation x squared minus 1 equal to 0. And we want to solve it for x. So we get the two solutions. Now to check that these are indeed the solutions, let's assign the left hand side of the equation to a variable. And now let's take this variable and substitute the first solution. So we substitute minus one for x, and this is just the Python dictionary format. If we run, we get zero. So this indeed solves the equation. And let's change it to one. So this is also a solution. Now to see that this is not returning zero for everything. So let's try something that's not a solution. One divided by two, we don't get zero. And zero. Again, we don't get zero. So I think we can trust the functionality. Now this syntax assumes that the right hand side is zero, but if it's not zero, then you can use the equation function from the SymPy library. So you just separate the left and right hand side by comma. And now if you run, hopefully we'll get the same solution. So yeah, it works. Now let's try a slightly different equation. So let's say x squared minus five x equal to minus six. And now if we run, so we get the two solutions. Actually, we have seen this equation before. Remember when we were discussing the factor? So let's apply the factor to this quadratic. Minus 5 times x plus 6. And now if we run, so you can see the factors and you can see how they map to the solution. Right, so it's the same result. Again, another encouraging sign. Now this solve is quite a versatile function. You can use it to solve system of equations. So you just put them in big brackets and separate them by comma. So let's say we have been given two equations, two times x plus three times y minus seven and five times x plus seven times y minus 10. If we run, so we got the value of x and the value of y it will solve the two equations. Now here, it deduced that we want to solve the system for x and y because these were the only variables in the system. But it's good to specify what variables we want to solve it for. Now to see that these values of x and y are indeed the solutions of each of the equation. Let's substitute the values. So let's start with the first equation. And now this time to substitute we will use the evaluate floating function and we also supplied the values we want to substitute in a slightly different format. So we use this flag and dictionary format. So essentially saying substitute minus 19 for x and 15 for y and then evaluate the resulting expression using floating arithmetics. So we get a number very close to zero. And now let's move to the second equation. So again, we get zero. So it has indeed solved the system. Now we can happily move to calculus and let's start with very basic, the limit. And let's say we want to calculate the limit of x square minus one divided by x minus one as x approaches one. So this is one of those tricky situations. So if we run, so we see the limit is two. 
and we have previously seen this equation remember when we were using the cancel function now we might be interested in the left limit so all we have to do is to supply another argument minus so it's say from left and then we can calculate the limit from the right hand side as well so we just supply plus so here they are equal but they won't necessarily be equal so let's try something different so let's say x divided by absolute value of x and let's say we are interested in the limit as x approaches say 0 and we will first calculate the limit from the left so we get minus 1 and now let's copy this expression and change minus to plus so this will now calculate the limit from the right and we get plus 1 so the left and right limits are not equal here and let's try another tricky expression remember the sine of x divided by x so x here is in radians and we are interested in the limit as x approaches 0 so we should get 1 and we indeed get 1 so I think we are satisfied with the limit now the expression will get complicated but the basic code remains the same so let's move to the derivative and it's very easy again we just use the function diff and let's calculate the derivative of x to the power 5 with respect to x and now if you want to calculate the second derivative we just add 2 and alternatively you can also write the x twice so it will calculate the derivative with respect to x and then with respect to x again and we can calculate the third derivative or we can type the x three times right so we see calculating the derivative is no biggie now we might not have an explicit expression and we might have some implicit function so just like we define the symbols x and y We can use this same symbol function to define symbolic functions so let's say f and g so we use the symbols but now we want them to be functions so we set class equal to function and now if you run we have two symbolic functions now so we can do things like f of x so it will be some unspecified function and alternatively you can also define the symbolic function by using this function directly but the problem is I have to define each function individually for example if I try f comma g it doesn't work and if I try space instead of comma it doesn't work either so if you have one or two functions then you can probably use the function separately but if you have a large number of functions then I would go with the symbols fewer things to keep in memory right so now we can apply the diff to the symbolic functions so let's verify the product rule of differentiation so we apply diff to f times g so we get this computer representation so this derivative is how it represents the derivative and let's apply this derivative to f times g This is giving us the computer representation of the derivative this is because we haven't enabled the fancy printing so let's run init underscore printing and now let's go upstairs and rerun the diff of f times g so we get the product rule of differentiation and we can also rerun the derivative of f times g so this is the unevaluated version and if you want to evaluate the derivative you can apply do it to it and now we can go upstairs and instead of f times g try f divided by g so you get the caution rule of derivative here we didn't specify that we want to take the derivative with respect to x but there was only one variable so it deduced that it must be with respect to x but 
it's better to write it explicitly and then we can also say that we want to take the second derivative with respect to x I'm not going to check that it's indeed the second derivative so I'm going to trust it now now that we know how to represent the functions and derivatives I think the next logical step is to solve differential equation so let's say we have a first order differential equation say first derivative of a function f with respect to x minus f of x minus exponential of x let's see the left hand side of the equation first and now to solve this differential equation so we just use the d solve so it's differential solve and if we run So we have the general solution, c1 being an arbitrary constant and we should have told the d solve that we want to solve this differential equation for f of x. Now to determine a particular solution, we can supply initial conditions. So the syntax is quite simple. So you type in ICS equal, it's the same flag format we saw before. And let's say we have been given the function value at x equal to 0. So we take f of x and substitute 0 for x. And let's say this is equal to 0. And because this is the dictionary structure. So the initial condition is 0. And if we run. So we have the particular solution. Now we can go second order. So let's say we have been given an equation which is the second derivative of f with respect to x plus let's say 3 times the first derivative plus let's say 2 times f so let's run and now to solve this equation, we use the same d solve. So we supply the equation. And we say we want to solve it for f. So we get the general solutions with two arbitrary constants now. It's because the equation is second order. And now if we are given the initial conditions, which is the value of the function and the derivative at zero, so if we take f and if we substitute 0 for x, so let's say the initial value of the function is 0. And if we take the derivative of the function and then substitute 0 for x. So this is the value of the derivative at x equal to 0. And let's say it's equal to 1. Now if we run, we get the particular solution. Now this d solve has also automatically simplified the equation so if you want the solution not to be simplified then you can set the simplify equal to false and you will get the solutions without simplification. Right so that's everything I wanted to cover in this video so I look forward to seeing you in the next video.